What happens to Kimberly Pullman now? Well, let's bring in her lawyer. Joining me right now is Lawrence Griesbaum. Your Kimberly, your uh, your client was arrested today, but she's not facing charges just yet. Authorities are seeking a peace bond. What are the conditions of this peace bond, and do you expect her to actually face charges at one point? Well, I, I don't expect her to face charges. If uh, she was going to be facing charges, uh, presumably they would have treated her the same way they did uh, Ms. Shui, and that is they would have arrested her on, on various charges. What they did is they... Uh, I got a call at 4.30 in the morning this morning from the RCMP advising me that she was in Montreal, uh, that she'd been arrested, uh, on the, and, and that a peace bond was going to be sought, and uh, that she would then be transferred to uh, British Columbia and uh, appear before a justice of the peace, and uh, she would be expected to sign a recognizance with various conditions in place. I don't know what those conditions are. And but that she would be released uh, within the 24 hours. So um, she's not facing criminal charges. She's being asked to uh, enter into a peace bond, uh, which is uh, uh, which is fine. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. we'll get the disclosure of what evidence they have and uh, see whether or not uh, she's prepared to enter into a peace bond or not. Um, what I find fascinating is the Prime Minister coming out saying, uh, you know, that we should be uh, charging these people uh, for going to. Uh, uh, Syria in, in, in a, an effort to support terrorism. Uh, we've been saying for three years, go ahead, charge them. Get them out of Syria. Yeah. Bring them home. Charge them here where they can get a fair trial. That's what we've been asking for and that the Canadian government has uh, not been doing that. And that's uh, why we brought the action in federal court to uh, force them to do just that. And to that action in federal court that, that you know, for repatriating other Canadians, where is that fight right now? Well, I represent uh, 23 uh, men, women and children, all Canadians, who have been detained in detention camps and prisons for uh, upwards of three years. And uh, our action is going to go pr proceed before the federal court on uh, December 5th and 6th. And uh, the hope is that we will be able to convince the court that the uh, Global Affairs Canada needs to do the one thing that the Autonomous Administration in Northeastern Syria has been asking for, and that is to simply make an official request for the repatriation of, its, uh, of our citizens, of our Canadian citizens. Twenty other countries have done it. More than a thousand people have been returned to their uh, native countries. Uh, there just seems to be no good reason why Canada can't do the kind of thing that they just did today right. with Kimberly Pullman and Ms. Shui. Is Ms. Pullman in BC right now? Has she landed? That's uh, my understanding is yes, that she's landed there and uh, she'll be processed, uh, as I say before, just of the peace uh, very shortly. Her sister, as we reported, you know, told Human, Human Rights Rights that she was traumatized. How is she doing? When I talked to her, she was first delighted to be back in right. uh, Canadian soil. Uh, but uh, I think the primary reason that she was uh, uh, repatriated is because of her very uh, precarious health. So uh, that's, that's going to have to be uh, looked at as soon as possible. When you consider the reason that she said she went over there to marry a, mm -hmm. an ISIS fighter, I mean, is there an issue of people who are being radicalized because uh, of, of various issues? And is the government doing enough to address these issues of preventing people from being radicalized to go over? I, I don't know how, you know, what, what role the government could have in terms of trying to prevent people from being radicalized. But, you know, where they have evidence of people who have been involved in or supported uh, some type of crime overseas, we have the mechanism, we have the laws. Uh, the Prime Minister just referred to them. And we also have a huge department within the Department of Justice that are, that are there. And they're they're full-time uh, being paid, lawyers and paralegals and so on. They're there in order to uh, investigate and prosecute uh, the cases where warranted. That's the mechanism that we should be using, not letting them rot for three years in prisons and detention centers. Lawrence Greenspawn, lawyer for Kimberly Pullman. Thank you so much for joining us today. I appreciate it. Thanks for interest.